Now this code that we wrote in the last lecture, it works, but we could do better. What I don't like about this implementation is passing this email parameter or argument around. In object-oriented languages, where we have the concept of objects, we shouldn't really pass parameters around because an object encapsulates some data and some behavior. So if an object or a class has all the data it needs, we don't have to pass parameters around. This kind of code we have here is what we refer to as procedural programming. That's the kind of code we used to write 30 years ago before we had object-oriented programming languages. So imagine if we had a field here called email, then we wouldn't have to pass this email around. And here we could simply log this to the email. So you can see our method has no parameters. And this is cleaner, easier to read, easier to understand, and easier to maintain. Also, going back to the definition of a component in Angular, remember a component encapsulates the data, the logic, and the HTML markup behind a view. Here, the email field is used to encapsulate the data, and the onKeyUp method represents the behavior or the logic behind this view. And of course, here's our HTML template. Now, how do we get here? Well, first of all, we don't need this template variable anymore. So delete. Also, we're not gonna pass that here. So our code is a little bit cleaner now. Now, earlier you learned about property binding. So we can bind the value property of this input object in the DOM to this email field, right? And now if I initialize this to let's say me at example.com, when we load this page, the input field should be populated with this email address. So look, we've got me at example.com. However, if I change this to domain.com and press enter, now in the console, look, we got me at example.com. So how come we didn't get me at domain.com? Because with property binding, the direction of binding is from the component to the view. So if the value of this email field changes at some point in the future, the view will be notified and this input field will be automatically updated. Now what we need here is a slightly different kind of binding. We want a binding that works in two ways, from component to the view and from the view to the component. So if we type something in the input box, we want this email field to be updated. Let me show you one way to implement this. And of course, this is not the best way, but I'm going to show you a better way in just a few seconds. So with this value property binding, we have one direction from component to the view. For the other direction, we can modify this expression here. So instead of directly calling the unkey up method, first we can set email to dollar event dot target dot value, then semicolon and then call the unkey up method. So what I want you to pay attention to here is that for the value of event binding, you can write any expression. So here we have two statements, one for setting the email field and the other to call the unkey up method. Now let's try this code. Save, back in the browser. So we've got me at example.com and I'm gonna change this to domain.com. Now enter. Look, in the console, we got me at domain.com. Beautiful. So with this implementation, we have two-way binding. But as you can imagine, this is the kind of feature that we may need frequently in a lot of applications. We don't want to write all this repetitive code. Is there a better way? Of course there is. In Angular, we have a special syntax for implementing two-way binding. So let me duplicate this line so you can see the difference. Instead of using property binding, on the value property, we use the two-way binding syntax, which includes square brackets and parentheses. Now, if this syntax is complicated or you may forget it, I give you a tip. This is called banana in a box. So this is a banana and this is a box. So banana in a box. Now, instead of value, we bind to ng model. What is this? Well. Our DOM objects, our input DOM object, doesn't have a property called ng model. So this is something that Angular adds to this DOM object. Now earlier you saw ng4, remember? 
NG4 is a directive, and we use directives to manipulate the DOM. So in Angular, we have another built-in directive called ng-model that is used for implementing two-way binding. So this implementation we have here is encapsulated in a generic way inside a directive called ng-model. And with this, we don't have to repeat this code every time. So then we can simplify this expression. We can delete this statement. And in keyup.enter, we simply call the unkeyup method. Now look, the second line is obviously cleaner, shorter, and easier to understand. So here's the lesson. Whenever you want to use two-way binding, use the banana in a box syntax and bind to the ng model property. Now let's try this. Save. All right, we got this error. Can't bind to ng model since it isn't a known property of input. That's a familiar error, isn't it? So basically, our input object doesn't have a property called ng-model. It's something that Angular adds here. But why are we getting this error? Angular framework consists of several different modules. In every module, we have a bunch of building blocks that are highly related. We have components, directives, and pipes, and these are highly related. Now, not every application needs all the modules in Angular, because when you bring all these modules, you increase the code size. So this ng-model directive is defined in one of the modules called forms. And by default, this is not imported into your application. So if you want to use ng-model or if you want to build any kind of form, you need to explicitly import this module. How do we do that? Very easy. So let's go to app module with command and P or control P. We go to app.module. Now look at this ng-module decorator. Here we have a property called imports that is set to an array. In this array, we have browser module. Browser module is one of the built-in modules of Angular, and it brings some features that almost every browser application needs. Now here we need to add another module, the forms module. So on the top, so look, this is where we are importing the browser module. Let's import forms module from at angular slash forms. So that's defined in this library. And then we can import it into our main app module. So forms module, save back in the browser. All right, we've got me at example.com. And then I'm going to change this to domain.com, enter, look at the console. And here's me at domain.com. Beautiful.